follow this guy. So, <laughs> so uh, back in January, I have a buddy somebody who has to do it. Dave. Somebody. I have a buddy who works in this company called Aztec Scenic Design. They do a bunch of just interior murals and just really amazing work as far as painting goes. So my buddy, he's been in the three D industry, you know, the industry, just all the three D stuff the past I don't know, year or two, trying to get me into it. So he calls me up one day. He goes, "Hey man, we have this idea. We're gonna make this." 3D printed ceiling. So he goes, our artist gave us a picture of the rendering he wants. It's right front here. And he's like, do you think you can figure out how to make this into 3D? So I got this picture. It's a basic little picture, kind of some crazy designs. I haven't modeled since like 1999. So I was like, yeah, I can figure it out. So <laughs> he told me what program. He's like, here, use uh, Autodesk 123D. It's really easy. So I played around about one, one or two nights, started coming up with little designs. So I submitted the designs to the boss, and he was like, oh my god, I can't believe you can do that. So here was the problem. Well, let me show you the picture. That was your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the finished product. I'll just show you the process. So, as oh, wow. so this is hundreds of wow. printed parts. How big is that, James? Eight inch. This is probably, I don't probably know the exact, like 20 by 20, I think. 20 feet? 20 feet by 20 feet. Yeah, Holy they're crap. huge. It's a whole ceiling yeah, thing. Yeah. Hundreds of prints, and it was just eight inch uh, RepRap i3 printers. Huh. So here's, let me see if I can buzz through here. This is completely unorganized, but like, oh, wow. sort of close ups. And the whole process is documented in here as far yeah, as. Maybe afterwards <laughs> when you get a closer. Yeah, if you guys want to come check this out a little later, I can show you some cool stuff too. Cool. Yeah. Let's see if I can just find an individual print here. And they're individually painted. They don't come out in the color. No, they come out just whatever color we had on hand. We were ordering. <laughs> people were running out of filament, so we're like, whatever colors you got, just ship them. So we were getting like 30, 40 rolls of filament at a time. Just oh, had wow. all these printers going. I bought my own printer because I'm trying to get in with this company. And my buddy bought four printers. Then we had another guy who bought a, a Ditto Plus. So we had like seven printers buzzing, ABS fumes in the tiny room. It was awesome. <laughs> trying to get this done. So we got that done. Everybody was impressed. It was all over Reddit. It was really cool. So trying to get in with the company again, I did this. This is one of their paintings. So this is like seven or eight prints just to show them, look, you know, I can still, I can still do stuff. Hire me. So I did that and then just kind of, these are just some thingiverse models here. Just as I'm trying to learn the printer, I have a whole box of the learning process, kind of some rough <laughs> stuff over there. In my attempts at painting are these guys. So then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then, we're using Autodesk 123D and a bunch of like you know mesh mixer and a little bit of Blender stuff like that. So then I got into Fusion recently, over the last like month, and never really used the program, but came up with this in the first night playing around because you have the ability to use something called T splines. It's like a, uh, it's a plane, but then you can just totally like grab the vertices and move stuff around. You can't do that in 123D, so it was awesome. So I came up with this. Everybody was blown away. It got featured on the website. And then, just as I was playing around, I was like, I wonder if I mix them with the Twisty. So I made this, everybody <laughs> liked that. <laughs> this, I was playing with just path follow. I made oh, a spring, so carved cool. it out, made something path follow it. It's very, much like a shell. Yeah, that's what my buddy said. So he goes, it looks like a shell, make something that lives in it. So then I made this little guy. Oh, cool. So he, <laughs> he lives in the shell, I'm not sure what he is. <laughs> he flies funny with that yeah. shell on him. <laughs> so then recently, now that I have Fusion 360, and uh, Aztec's pretty much doing you know their own thing right now. They're doing just a couple other smaller jobs. I took this is their artist. He did this painting, so I just took the painting. Took this is actually a cell phone picture, and I put it into Fusion 360, and I turned it into a 3D model, nice. and just nice. printed it out here. So that's nearly an exact replica. So how long did it take you to go from that print? This was one night. I turned it into model in one day. It took like six hours to go from. I did it at work, actually. So. <laughs> and I had, I'll show you the 3D. Don't, don't record, record that. Scratch yeah. that. <laughs> Got my laptop to work. Now. So yeah, it took a couple days to print because I only had one printer. So it was like, and I had filament issues. So it was like three or four days to get all the pieces out. And here's a fail so you guys can see. I'm having uh, heat creep issues. So I would get all the way like 90% complete, and then it would just print in the air. So I have dozens wow. of these. That's nice. Yeah, I fixed it now. It's just I had to add more fans. Oh, there you go. Okay. This was a, a t-shirt. I'm sure you guys have all seen the Willy Wonka design on the t-shirts. Huh. So I took a t-shirt, turned it into a JPEG, and then converted it to a, a vector image, and threw that into 123D. 
and was able to manipulate it and turn it into a 3D printable object. You can make it like crash on put ink on it and make it yeah. Yeah, make it like a stamp. stamp. Yeah. Actually, I took yeah. uh, Aztec's design and we did that. I made it all 3D for him, then he made another one that was a stencil so he can just go around to his work and spray paint his, his logo and stuff. Yeah, you use a, a flexible material shape, oh, right, so, right. Yeah, you could. I skipped so very much. Could make a stamp. I mean, it's not probably stamp material, but you could do it. So that was the first two. Yeah. So this got a lot of news. Autodesk was, you know, wanting some pictures and stuff sent to them. So then, my buddy goes, "Well, I want more creative control." This is him speaking. I want more creative control. I want to do a really just extreme three D ceiling. So they found a client. This ceiling is thirty five by thirty five. I think it's really huge. This one, I didn't do any modeling on this. I just printed and helped assemble it. So this is just a really extreme, crazy, wow, weird well, angles. This is some dude's home theater. So oh, this wow. is his ceiling in his home theater. This was thousands of prints. This took, I think, three months total from, yeah, from drawing to completion. And wow. these artists are amazing. Ben Kremer, I think somebody here said he knows, knows him. That might have been. These guys do some amazing, amazing finishing yeah. work. And that's Aztec Scenic Design. That's all happening here locally? Yeah, yeah, this is locally. I think this one was in a, wow. maybe Ocala. But yeah, their shop is 20 minutes down the road here. Oh, that's awesome. Yep, so this one again, I, I can go all the way back and show you. We went picture crazy, sorry. As soon as I get some cool stuff, I'll slow down. So you can see we use a lot of, uh, a lot of filler, like you use the, uh, the Rust-Oleum spray paint. And two-part epoxy and a lot of, it's a the part of epoxy putty. Yeah, or? what's the putty stuff called? Uh, two part. Uh, yeah, for yeah. It's got, uh, so you see, sculpture. we just had epoxy sculpt. Exactly. Like Thank you. So we just had boxes of, of prints laying around. This one's actually. And this guy, this is Mark Leonard. He's it's basically his idea to do all these three D printed ceilings. This is my buddy. I've known him since like ninety six. What's the process for assembling it in the right order? A picture, you look at a picture, are they number we had it. there? Is, is there any <laughs> method yeah. to the madness? Yeah, I mean, everything he does is kind of ge geometric. So he put out 35 by 35 square, then, you know, X it all off and made just some quadrants. Gotcha. So that, everything so that we do, pattern. yeah, everything we do is a repeating design. So, yeah, it's got a symmetry. Like, like this. Sure. Is yeah, that a symmetry so the ceiling was basically the same thing, but it had like 30 of these that were just all sure, twisted take weird it. objects. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, that's what he does. He models one, then he just mirrors a bunch of different ways. So that you're no, only no. really right, the, un the number of unique right. pieces is not yeah, as so big as the whole thing. So here's the ceiling, so you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just the square. That's all we have. Uh, they need to do a Penrose tiles one. Have you ever seen the Penrose tiles? Those are pretty uh, fascinating. So this was I think three or four months ago. This was yeah. And all this can be found on Reddit. I don't know if you guys read it. Uh, there's a great uh, subreddit called 3D Printing. That's right. You said so if you're looking at it, you can yeah. find it. Do you like that Reddit? Yeah. Like that's every time I put stuff well, on, people like bash. And full on. Yeah, yeah I I since I've been getting more involved, I haven't spent too much time. But yeah, when I first got into the training, that's where I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like it before, but now everybody people but I, I, I will be bashing it. And that, that's about it. I'm just trying to figure out how to make some money like this guy. All right. <laughs>